suffering uh, from the weather and floods and tornadoes, homes being destroyed, all those families who have been hit by violence and shootings and what have you. But Lord, we know you are there and you have it all under control. Oh, bless them. We don't know their names, but we see their faces and we know that you will bless and you will listen and you will act on our prayers because of our love in our hearts. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, everyone was looking at their television. Went on, they went on the air at 5 o'clock in the morning, the coronation of King Charles in England. And they went through all these ceremonies and they put a big crown on his head. It looked like it weighed about 10 pounds. And uh, he put a big crown on his head and all the robes and what have you. But my Bible tells me, and I want you to remember this from this old preacher. My Bible tells me, Apostle Paul says that uh, I have kept the faith. Laid up for me is a crown of righteousness. In other words, uh, you saw a crown on top of the king's head, but you have a crown that's laid up for you through Christ Jesus. It's already waiting for you in glory. Your crown with your name and the jewels. And the Lord said, when I come to make up my jewels. I want to be a source of encouragement this morning. And yesterday, the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, celebrated the birthday of our founder, Bishop R.C. Lawson, who God had to strike down, so to speak, with affliction, with uh, tuberculosis. He ran away from being a minister. He didn't want to preach the gospel. It reminds me of Jonah, who ran away, wanted to go and bought a ticket to Tarsus instead of Nineveh. And uh, Bishop Lawson had to go through an affliction. And because he was saved as a result of his affliction. And because he was saved, uh, he became not only a spiritually uh, enhanced person, but a spiritually stronger person, a saved person, a called person, and a chosen vessel in the hands of the Lord. Oh, like Apostle Paul, uh, when Ananias said, but this man tried to hurt us, speaking about Apostle Paul, and the Lord said, but he is a chosen vessel unto me uh, to preach and bear my name to the Gentiles, and I must show him those things that he must suffer. That word suffer is very significant. The Lord used Bishop Lawson then through his affliction not only did he become a better person, but he, God used him to be one of the greatest uh, and to found one of the greatest Pentecostal apostolic organizations in this earth, uh, which has reached millions. Perhaps uh, if uh, we would not be here today, if it had not been for that man's life and that man's afflictions, and so there are many circumstances in this life who cause uh, us to be stronger and more spiritually stronger than we were before. My subject this morning is I am a better and a more spiritually stronger person because of what God took me through. I am a better and stronger spiritually stronger person because of what God took me through. There are many circumstances in this life that God uses to make us stronger, spiritually and physically, in all kinds of ways, academically, but mostly spiritually. And uh, we see afterwards that although we went through pain and suffering, Although we went through the vigors and the tests and the trials, because of it, we are blessed. 
We are blessed beyond measure, as the Bible says. So the subject this morning, I want to call it to your attention again. I'm a better and, and spiritually stronger person because of what God took me through. I don't know any of the saved people of God who hasn't been through something. There are many tests and trials and conditions and afflictions which and pressures even today, inflation and our bills. We, many of us have gone through storms in this life. And after the Lord has taken us through the storm, because we went through the storm, we have a new and different and more spiritually powerful mind. Such was the case with many of you. I remember my friend, uh, mother, the late mother Bessie Jones, who uh, said, I pay my tithes after the Lord healed her body uh, from cancer uh, and the doctors had given her up and she lived 15 years more, but she went back to the Lord and she said, Lord, why did you, I pay my tithes, I, I'm a prayer warrior, I'm faithful and what have you. And the Lord told her in her heart that thou might have a greater testimony. In other words, I'm a better and spiritually stronger person because of what God took me through. And so there are tests and trials and conditions and afflictions and pressures and storms in our life. And so when you look at the Bible, you see two storms that I can recollect, really three, but there's two that Jesus was in, and you know Jesus was sleeping and hit the part of the ship, and they woke him up, and Jesus said, peace be still. He stopped the storm right at the moment. But there was another time when he sent them, and he said, go over on the other side. And he sent them out, and he went up to the mountain to pray, and he went up there, and the Bible says he came after the fourth watch. Came on the fourth between three and six in the morning. But the waves and the storm was coming up. And he said, and they saw him coming, walking on the water in the midst of all this storm. And he said, I am here. Fear not, it is I. I am here. And he stayed with them as they went through. And that's what you got to see that God has done for you. You, uh, he did not stop the storm like before. He didn't stop the storm in your life. He didn't stop the affliction in your life. But he took you by the hand and said, it is I. And he took you through. And he took you on so that you could reach the other side. The old people used to sing a song, uh, Stand the storm, it won't be long. We'll anchor by and by. So I want to call your attention to uh, a little scripture that uh, David said. Oh, it's just one verse, but I tell you it's powerful. Psalm 119 and verse 71. And David says the same thing. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me and give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Most of us know that a tree that never goes through a storm may not be the strongest tree. You look out there on all the trees, but the trees that weather the storms, as the wind comes in and the waves come in, and when the power of those winds, the, sh the tree begins to shift back and forth, holding on back and forth. But as it shifts back and forth, the roots are turning and going deeper so that after the storm is over, the tree is stronger. And that's the way God, when he takes you through your storm, when he takes through your, your affliction, when he takes you through your uh, tests and trial, your roots get deeper in God. And so he has sent me this morning to encourage your hearts who have gone through a great test, 
who are going through a difficult time right now, and God has delivered you, and I'm better before it, and you're better before it, because of what you went through. And when it's all over, I'm a better soldier than I was before. When it's all over, I'm a better servant than I was before. When it is all over, I'm a stronger prayer warrior than I was before. When it's all over, I'm a blessed and more understanding of God than I was before. And if I didn't go through that struggle, if I didn't go through that trial or that tribulation, that affliction, I tell you, I would not know him like I know him now. Bishop Lawson would say, I would not know him. You can say out there this morning, I would not know him like I know him because of what he took me through. Oh, there's so many examples in the Bible. I remember the viper and Apostle Paul, and when they were shipwrecked in Acts, the 28th chapter, and they went and they were on the Isle of Malta. And uh, Apostle Paul was gathering sticks for to make a fire because it was cold and damp. And uh, when he went to grab the sticks, a viper snake jumped up and took hold to his arm and bit him. And, and all he, he did, and the people who were observing said, well, it's all over for him now. <laughs> He'll never make it now. But Apostle Paul shook off uh, the viper, shook it off. And when he couldn't, and he held on to his arm. So the people looked and they saw him and said, well, it's just a matter of time. Let's wait for a few minutes because he, he's dead now. He won't make it. He's not going to get through this, this. But Apostle Paul shook that viper off. He shook it off. That snake went off. And Apostle Paul came back. And what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes God has to use you to see how uh, he brings you through suffering. He brings you through danger. He brings you through the snakes. <laughs> and so that they believe. And, and, and then when the doctors had given up, you're still here. When they had given up, Apostle Paul still stood there. So I've learned, and I'm telling you, and you heard me preach this before, but sometimes uh, the, the way out is not to stop like the waves that we ask Jesus, peace be still. The only way out is through. But when you're going to go through with God, he is not just going to leave you. He's going to take you by the hand and take you through. And so uh, Psalm 34 and 18 said, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. And David said, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Thou art good, and doest good, and teachest me thy statutes, and it is good for me to have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me, fashion me, and given me an understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Joseph was a good example through. He didn't understand what he was going through. Joseph went and he was put into the pit by his brothers. And then uh, he was misunderstood and confused and, and lied on when he went to Potiphar's house. And when he went to jail, into prison, he just didn't understand it. They threw him into prison. And then he went from the prison to the palace. And then he turned around and he said what I'm saying, saying to you this morning. He was better and stronger and knowledgeable and more, amen, spiritual. Uh, when he looked back and saw what God had taken him through, God had, it wasn't about him. It was about him being used as an instrument of God so as to incubate a nation. And he saved his family, Jacob, and there were only 70 of them that came into Egypt. And from there, God began to build over a 430 year period his nation unto himself. And so Joseph would tell you, 
I didn't understand it when I went through it. Joseph would tell you, when I found out what the Lord has as a special assignment for my life, though, I realized that what I went through, all that I went through, it was because to make a better me, to, to make me a servant, to make me an instrument. Uh, and Jacob was another one who wrestled with angel. Uh, he was afraid and coming upon Esau the next day, and he sent his family away. And uh, he sent uh, all of his relatives. And the Bible said, and Jacob uh, fought with the angel all night long. And uh, this is found in uh, the book of Genesis, 32nd chapter, 22nd verse. And he rose up at, at night and took his two wives and two uh, women servants and 11 sons and passed over to Jabrook. And he took them and he sent them over uh, the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, wrestled with the man until the breaking of day. In other words, the angel or God. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of his Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. This is Jacob talking to God now. And he said unto him, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, but your name shall be Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and men hath prevailed. And Jacob asked him, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou ask my name? And he blessed him right there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Because of what I went through, because of what I went through with God molding and wrestling with me all night long. And he looked up, and he saw the next day his brother uh, Jacob, and he lifted up his eyes about him and said, look, and Esau, his enemy, had 400 men, but he divided the children, and they became a team. You're going through something, that affliction, that test, that trial, that difficulty, that child that looks like they're going off the deep end. Looks like David, uh, you got to pray for them uh, when they get in the car. You don't know if they'll be picked up. They don't know people are shooting for the uh, slightest uh, infringement today. And so uh, that affliction, that test, that trial, that difficulty uh, that you went through, it made it better. And you are better and stronger spiritually. Not because just you went through it, but God went and took you through it and brought you through it. So it molded me. It made me closer to the Lord. It made me stronger. That test and that trial, I'm more directed than I was before. I, I have a press that I didn't have before. I press toward the mark of the high calling on Christ Jesus. And, and, and because I went through it, and because God took me through it, I'm, I have more strength. God gave me more strength. It gave me more confidence. It gave me more faith. It made me more a more anointed servant. It made me more prayerful. It made me more assured. It made me more spiritual. And it made me more prayerful. Hallelujah. And because I went through it, and God brought me through it, it made me more encouraged. I'm lifted up. I am determined to go through. And because of it, and because... Uh, I'm better for it, and I'm closer to the Lord because of it. I'm determined more than ever because of what I've been through. So this walk with God is a growth process, uh, not perfect. It's not You're not going on a cruise when you come into this world. When you come into Christ, you must suffer. The scripture says that if you're going to reign with him, you have to suffer with him. And I remember hearing the late, 
uh, Thomas Richardson say after many years, I think he was in his 90s, and I heard him say this, and it struck me down. He said, I'm in my 90s, and I've been past it for 60 years, and I'm still not where I want to be in God. I'm still learning to walk with God. And while I'm not where I want to be, I certainly am not where I was. Hallelujah. I'm still, uh, God brought me out. My friend, the late uh, Bishop Chris Dobbins said that God was walking through Harlem and he looked in the trash can and found him all covered with soot and sin and liquor and all kinds of things. And God picked him up with that smell of sin all over him and said, I can make a preacher out of this. I, I, I can clean him up. I can make him a vessel. Hallelujah. So the scripture in Isaiah said, for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but the watereth the earth, and make it forth, and bring forth, and bud, and that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing that I send it to. For ye shall go out with joy and be led with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. It shall be the Lord for thy name for everlasting sign that thou shalt not be cut off. Oh, look at Job. Oh, Job said, though he slay me, when it was all over, when he had been taking his family, taking his health, taking his lands, taking his cattle, but God gave it back, and, and, and because he went through it, God rewarded him. God said, you didn't turn around. You didn't turn back. You didn't give up. And so I, you've been through something, and Job was stronger, and God gave him back all those things. And so uh, you can say, I was sick, and God healed my body. And you can truly say, I'm better because of it. I, he, I know healing now because I was sick. I'm more joyous now. Uh, because I knew uh, the danger and didn't know the danger of the COVID and all those things. But I'm a better and stronger prayer warrior because of it. And so I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm better off. I'm better for it. I'm blessed for it. I'm anointed for it. I'm given uh, for it. And it's best that it's the greatest thing that I ever went through, those trials and tests that brought me closer to God. And so we're further down the road, righteousness, uh, to accomplish things for the Lord. And so Jacob will tell you, and Job will tell you, and uh, um, Paul will tell you. Uh, they will all tell you uh, that I'm better today because of what I went through. So I repented and stepped out on Jesus. I'm talking to somebody this morning. It's your time and you'll find that no matter what you're going through, you will look back on your life and think it over and see that you it was better that you went through it. But since we have received the Holy Ghost, we have uh, something that we didn't have before. We have power now. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And that's when uh, uh, Peter and John went up to the temple, and the man asked for alms, and he said, Silver and gold uh, have I none, but such as I have. I don't care. You may think I'm humorous, but I'm not trying to be humorous. But I tell you what I have and what you have in the Holy Ghost. We got what is called some such. Uh, and I can go, there's healing in such. Now there's delivering in such. There's all kinds of things, such as I have. There's love in such. That there is all kinds of things, so such as I have. And I'm a better instrument in God's hand because of it. I'm stronger. I have more anointing. You have more anointing. And I didn't give up, 
and you didn't have to stop. You didn't have to go back, but the Lord took you through. He took us through because he's on us, he's in us, he's through us. We serve one God who is above all and in all and through all, who made it all. And so I have a, uh, he gave me when he gave us the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can't tell me <laughs> that you didn't change the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the feet charged with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh, God made you better than you were before. I'm better equipped for battle. I'm better equipped for the test. I'm better equipped for the trial. I'm better equipped for the storms that are coming my way. And the devil is going to attack, but I'm better off with what I have in the Holy Ghost. My endurance is greater because of it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds, to the casting down of the imagination. So because of it, because I have fought what the Bible calls that good fight, I've become battle tested and I'm better off because I've been through the battle. I'm battle tested. You're battle tested. You've been through something. Look at it. Saints, because you are saved, you have anointing power. You have rebuking power. You have all those things. And so Bishop Richardson used to sing that song. I love to hear him sing that song. The same man said, I'm not what I should be. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not uh, what I want to be, but I'm certainly not what I was. So he used to sing the song, Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be in the bride. When my way grows dark, oh, walk right by my side. When my way grows weak, Lord, let me see something in my life, something in my life thou hast done for me. And we all sing that song. When I look back over my life and really think it over, we've been truly blessed. We've been truly blessed. It's a miracle. It's good for me to have been afflicted, like David said. For I have learned thy statutes. Hallelujah. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me and given me an understanding that I may learn thy commandments. So all that you've been through, people of God, all that God has brought you through, he brought you through, amen, and you're better off for it. You're stronger. You're better spiritually. You're stronger spiritually. And because he brought you through, you can stand on a better and stronger testimony because he brought you through. And those babies are saved that you've been praying for. Somebody's looking. Somebody is observing That's, that God answers their prayer. God answers her prayer. God answers his prayer. And they're looking out for us. And so because you went through that suffering, because you call on the name of Jesus, because you didn't give up, you're better spiritually and stronger because of what God has brought you through. God bless you.